Yeah, my name is Josh Heitkamp. I'm part owner of Finley Brewing Company. I'm Susan Treese, co-owner. Aaron Osborne, co-owner. Steve Treese, co-owner. Alex Treese, co-owner of Finley Brewing Company. Well, it was a group of friends getting together over beers and talking about how there was a lack of uh, craft breweries in Northwest Ohio. So we started by doing home brewing. We would meet once a week or so, and we would each take turns taking the lead and, and formulating the brew that week. We got into the out of the garage. We uh, bought a 600, 900 square foot building on the north end of town. Uh, we brewed 12 gallons at a time. We were able to brew enough beer to open one night a week. There was a fire next door, and so that kind of prompted us to move a little bit faster with finding a place and, and opening a larger facility. Currently, Finley Brewing Company on uh, 213 East Crawford Street is a 6,000 square foot facility with 3,000 square feet devoted for the brewing and the fermentation process and 3,000 square feet devoted to the kitchen and the tap room. We are a brewery and tap room. We have a full kitchen in the front. Um, we have 18 of our own beers on tap at any given time. I think we do a phenomenal job pushing out food. We are really well known for our hamburgers and the food menu we have. I feel very fortunate with the staff we have in the kitchen, as well as our front of house, our servers, our bartenders. They just, they are constantly moving. There is a lot of science involved in brewing. There's microbial science, there's mineral science, there's thermodynamics. Brewing beer all starts with water. Water is the most important ingredient in beer. Water is so important because it's the basis of every beer that's brewed. And there are, there are minerals and chemicals in water that are gonna affect the way that beer is brewed. If I were to take somebody's recipe from the water coming off, coming out of our tap, it's gonna taste completely different because the mineral profile of that water is very, very important. Some of the things you don't want, such as chlorine, which we have always taken out, even at our old location, we do now, using charcoal filters to remove the chlorine. And we also get rid of sediment. We found that the water in Finley, Finley City Water, actually has some uh, minerals in it that are quite conducive to brewing decent beer. And uh, we've pretty much left those in and we don't mess with those too much. Uh, it, it, we found we, we have real good results, which is the water that comes out of the tap, basically. Once you have the water um, that you're happy with, you will you will move on to finally actually uh, getting all the uh, uh, ingredients around for your brew. The first ingredient you're gonna get around is your malted barley. Two row barley that has been kilned, so a process of basically heating it, and all of that difference is the darker grains are kilned much longer. So a very dark uh, grain might give you chocolate or uh, coffee notes, roasted notes. All beer recipes are always gonna have a base malt to start. So you're gonna start with, you know, a certain percentage of your of your grain bill. It will just be all two row barley, um, but sometimes it might be 75% two row barley and 10% um, chocolate malt and 5% special roast. And that's how you might end up making like a porter or a stout or something like that. That's how you'll get that darker beer. There's all sorts of sugar and starches in those grains that we're trying to, to extract with some hot water and you need to crush those grains open. You need to kind of crack them open, but you don't want to do it too much because if you turn it into basically flour, um, you're gonna to try to mix that with water. And if you ever mix flour and water together, it turns into a paste. So once you've crushed your grains, we can start brewing. You blend your crushed grains, your water together, and that creates your, your mash. And you wanna make sure that you're constantly stirring your mash. You wanna to try to make sure you're not having any clumps of grain in there. You wanna extract all the sugar and starches that you can from that mash. Once you've done that for say an hour, different recipes call for different lengths of, uh, of time. You then wanna move that wort into the boil kettle. You separate the sweet wort from the grains that were left behind and that all goes into the boil kettle and you do that over a certain period of time, what we call a sparge. So you might take an hour, you might take 90 minutes to very slowly do that. You wanna slowly add hot water, which will stop the conversion process. And it also rinses off all the sugar. So you're, you're pushing out everything that you possibly can out of that mash, out of that grain bed. Once you start the boil, uh, the boil serves many purposes, um, but you'll wanna boil for 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, you're boiling to sanitize. You're boiling to stop the sugar conversion process. And then you're also doing it to bitter the beer. So again, like I said, this is a sweet wort. You need to bitter it up a little bit. You need to kind of balance that out. That's where hops come into play. 
Now hops serve a twofold process when you're adding them. There's bittering and there's aromatics. So hops that you add early in, into the boil um, are typically there to make the bittering flavor of beer. You want that bitterness in beer because otherwise it would just be cloyingly sweet, be like drinking Kool-Aid. Um, the hops that are added at the end of the boil, those give you those aromatics, the, the piney, the floral, the lemony, things like that that you get with your nose as you bring the beer up to your mouth for consumption. Now a hop is simply just a, a flower of the hop plant that is then dried and pelletized. So if you use less hops, to just lightly balance your wort. That's where you might get like a pale ale. You might see that in porters and stouts. But if I'm gonna use more hops, I'm gonna keep loading hops in there. Um, that's where you're gonna get your IPAs. You finished with your boil. Um, your, your timer has rung. You have to cool down um, the wort before you would pitch your yeast in by going through what's known as a plate chiller. So the plate chiller has separate plates like this. And on one side, we run ice cold water. And the other side, the wort goes through. When the cold water comes out the other end, it's hot. When the hot wort comes out the other side into the fermenter, it's now cool. Everything after this beer has been boiled must be sanitized because a nice, delicious, sugary substance such as a wort um, is very attractive to all kinds of microorganisms. We want one kind of microorganism to affect this wort, and that is yeast. But in vessels that are going to that are gonna contain beer, especially as it's, you're adding yeast to it and it's fermenting, they have to be, they have to be totally sanitized. No unwanted microbes in there at all. If we have something that gets into the product while it's either being brewed or fermented, that could ruin and destroy an entire, maybe a thousand gallons worth of beer. So we don't want that. So we make, make sure using a series of caustic and acids that everything that that beer touches, once it leaves the boil kettle, is completely sanitized. It will have no bacteria or anything that can mess up that fermentation process. The yeast eats those sugars and creates alcohol and CO2. That's how we, that's how we create an alcoholic beverage using yeast. But you put a certain amount in there and that yeast knows it just starts doing its job. It starts eating. So you will see active fermentation if you were to visit uh, brew houses. You'll see probably what's what we call a blow off. So coming off an arm of that fermenter into a bucket, a sanitized solution, and you'll see it bubbling. And that is all of the CO2 that's being produced by that yeast. So once that beer has fermented, it is now drinkable. It is a beer, um, but there's there are certain steps you wanna do before it would hit your tap. You wanna let it sit, age, develop its flavors. You might wanna add ingredients. It is at this step or while the yeast is still going that we would add fresh fruit. It is also where we would dry hop the beer. So all those hops that we threw in the boil, we can also throw them in during fermentation. Um, and that will not get any of the bitterness that those hops would generally pull from the boil, but it'll ex extract all the flavors. You're almost ready to package that beer, put it in the kegs, put it in the cans. Now, traditionally when uh, beer was fermented just in an old barrel, that, that fermentation process, of creation of carbon dioxide is the reason why beer was carbonated to begin with. That's why traditional beer is, is carbonated that way. Now we purge our, our, or release our carbon dioxide produced by the yeast and then reintroduce it so we can be more precise with our carbonation levels because every beer calls for a, diff, a different style, a different level of carbonation. We use something called a carbonation stone. That's in the side of the tank and it's got little tiny bubbles, it's little tiny holes that are almost, you, you can't really see. They're small enough that when you put CO2 into that stone and that's submerged in the beer, um, the bubbles are so small that as soon as they come out of that stone, they dissolve into the beer. Once it's carbonated, we then package it into cakes or cans. And then the best part of the whole process, you can pour a pint. It, my favorite beer changes every day. I'm an IPA guy, so I like uh, IPAs that are fresh because that hopness level, hoppiness level will go down over time. So if you get it early, um, you get that freshest beer possible, which you can get here at Finley Brewing Company because you're at the source. My favorite beer at Finley Brewing Company changes all the time. Probably uh, Yellow Car Shandy. The, my favorite beer that Finley Brewing Company we brew here in-house is probably got to be the Floodwater Stout. You know, my favorite beer is our, our first beer we ever made, American Bitter. It's a classic English bitter with American hops. It's the first one we ever served, and I, and I love the taste of it too, but for those two reasons, it's, it's always gonna be my favorite. I think.